So the first mistake is not considering nutrient concentration. When I first started out, I would just load in the maximum amount of nutrients, like 1500 parts per million. And then by the time it concentrated down to the bottom, I'd be looking at like 3000 and my plant would be ruined at that point. So when you first load in your nutrients into the cracky setup, the idea is that as, as the water evaporates, the nutrients are gonna concentrate more and more. Uh, so you really don't wanna load in that many from the start, otherwise you're gonna end up with an insane amount of nutrients by the end. My general rule here is I load half. If I'm looking for a target PPM of 1500, then I'll load in 750 to start. That's my way of avoiding over nutrients by the time you reach that concentrated nutrient in the bottom. Number two, root rot. Understanding what causes root rot is a great way to avoid root rot. And every time I've run into it in my setups, it's been because I've had like way more water than air. So how do we get air into a cracky setup, you might ask? The general principle and design of the cracky method is to allow more air into it as the plant's getting bigger and bigger. But let's say there were some miscalculations along the way, or I don't know, something went wrong from the start, um, and you need to get more air into the jar before the evaporation happens. A great way to do that, and something I would recommend really for all your hydro gardens, is to add some H2O2, or hydrogen peroxide. It is a natural oxygenator, oxygenizer, oxy oxygenizer? So simply by adding 10 milliliters per gallon of 3% hydrogen peroxide to your nutrient water, you're gonna be adding quite a bit of concentrated oxygen too. And you start to even see little bubbles on your roots as it works away. And knowing that it's in there, not just adding oxygen to your roots, but cleaning your whole setup is just a fantastic feeling. So you really can't go wrong with adding hydrogen peroxide. Don't forget that ratio. And it might just save your setup. The third mistake that people make when putting together their cracky setups. That is not calculating the container size right. To do this properly and to calculate the container size right, you, you really have to understand how the cracky setup works and you have to understand the plants you're growing a little bit, you know? If I was trying to grow, you know, a tomato plant, then I would need a much, much larger vessel because that's gonna have a much more intricate and larger root system and it's gonna grow over a larger period of time. So you're gonna need a lot more water and you're gonna need to evaporate a lot slower. So understanding the growth cycle of your plant in correlation with the size container you're planning on using and then also in correlation with the making sure your nutrients are concentrating at the right rate. It's all really key to making a good cracky setup work. If one of those things are out of sync, then you could end up with real issues. So number four. So I think it's pretty obvious when your grow lights are too close, but that's not usually what I see when it comes to beginners. Usually it's trepidation, not overzealousy, that leads to growth issues. So I mean, grow lights are made to be 12 to 18 inches away from your plant. If you look at these PPFD images, you can even see that the power output or the photon density between 12 inches and 18 inches is almost halved. So making sure that your lights are really close to your plant are, are, is gonna be, is gonna make a really huge difference when it comes to your growth. Now, I know that's not directly related to the cracky method, uh, but that's something I've seen a lot. And that's an issue that, that I had when I first started off and I didn't understand why my plants weren't growing very fast. And then I realized that I wasn't giving them the proper lighting. You know, if you could try to always keep your light about 12 inches from the top of your plant, and as your plant grows, you can move your light up. Um, that's kind of a really good general rule to make sure that everything's gonna grow properly. So number five, the final issue or mistake that people make or run into with cracky setups is algae. The thing is, if you're serious about doing a cracky setup or a cracky garden, likely you're gonna have five gallon jugs, you're going to have covered jars, you're gonna have the UV jars, and algae's not really gonna be an issue for you because you're gonna have all your sunlight blocked. But if you want your cracky setup to be in your kitchen or you want it to be a showcase in your house and you wanna be able to see all the roots, then here are a couple things that you can do to, to try to avoid algae. I mentioned a few things in this video, definitely check that out as well. These are gonna be totally different things. It might seem a little bit like no brainers, but hopefully they can help you out. Okay, so obviously blocking light is the best way to keep algae out, but if we're going to have a clear jar, what's the best way to avoid getting algae? Well, I actually think the best way to avoid getting algae if you're growing in a clear jar is to just grow something that grows fast. Leafy greens and herbs are fantastic for the cracky method because they grow so fast that they don't even really give algae a, an opportunity. 
And then if you're going to grow something bigger, likely you're going to use something like a five gallon bucket or a big tub anyway, which isn't going to allow any sunlight in. So if you do the two things that I recommended in the last video, as well as just growing, you know, leafy greens or herbs in your mason jars, then you really shouldn't run into algae. And if you take the other four things to heart, then hopefully you don't run into any other issues at all. I look forward to hearing about how everything goes for you down in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.